Perfect. So we, we got to talk a lot about the brand, the athlete experience. I mean, something I want to start off with, and Jack, you are going to be my guy on this, is the value in NFTs. Do we think it's a bubble? How do we think that that's going to play into strategies as an athlete and a brand? Because I already know off the bat that you, what is your Twitter bio? Own a LeBron dunk moment? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what you think NFTs are now and where you think they're going to go. I think it's obviously very early in NFTs, brand new technology. I mean, it is a few years old, but it's finally hitting a little bit of the mainstream. And the vehicle it did that through was definitely NBA Top Shot because they're licensed by the league. Uh, they kind of hid all things crypto and blockchain. You can pay with credit card. You don't really know everything that's going on behind the scenes. For the more tech savvy people, you did understand. You could see what was being minted behind the scenes, stuff like that. But NFTs as a whole, I think, are, I mean, my bet is that they are going to 100% be the future. Like, there's not a doubt in my mind. That's why I started to look at CryptoPunks, which were the first ever NFT, uh, just to make a bet kind of through that lane. But what it's going to do is it's going to change engagement levels across uh, many spheres of media. And for this conversation, sports media, you're going to be able to, you've already engaged the NBA fan, reconnected them to players. Players are engaging. Uh, and you're going to be able to do a million different things utility-wise from going to a game, scan your ticket, drop a moment in your wallet, you have like a digital passport to Spencer Dinwiddie could say, you know, instead of setting up a Patreon and writing a blog to his best fans, he, you can say, own a hundred of my Top Shot moments and we'll do a Sunday Zoom or own a thousand of them. And we will literally like have a dinner once a year out in LA or something. So just the engagement level from this stuff, it's going to change uh, the ability to do so many, so many things. So kind of bouncing off of that, the re-engagement, this is a question for everybody. Um, do you think athletes should have first rights to their NFT moments? If we also think about, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about the NCAA and rules and regulations. You know, if Stanford, if Tiger was at Stanford and made it shot, technically Stanford would have first rights to that. So what do you guys feel about athletes having first rights to their own moments? Well, I think that's what's great about decentralization, which is they do. They do have rights to do whatever they want to do with their likeness, but they also play for a league. So something that happens on the floor or on the field, yeah, the, the league owns that. The league created the infrastructure. They're being paid to be those athletes, right? It's kind of a similar system to we're in right now. If I go to work, anything I do at work is therefore owned by the company. That's what you sign on to. Now, the popularity that you gain is also because of the league. On the flip side, you see athletes like Gronk and Patrick Mahomes creating their own F NFTs. If their user base is big enough, they're creative enough with how they want to utilize them, all they have to do is kind of eliminate the logos and marks. Now, they can't have the video, right, of, of the actual throw or the touchdown catch, but you can still create really cool pieces of art. And I think that's the thing is don't just focus on the what it actually looks like focus on the utility of the nft and i think i think patrick mahomes uh nft was amazing because it raised a ton of money for charity but you had to spend a lot of money to get a signed jersey a lot of people would have spent a lot of money to get a follow back from patrick on instagram or to be in a text group with him uh one sunday before the game like let's really start thinking out of the box how do we utilize these nfts in a really effective manner where we don't need to rely on the What's, what's, what's cool too is, is that gives the uh, athlete the advantage is like um, they have they have also the first drop as well because it's their is their collectibles right um, it's kind of I kind of compare it to like the sneaker culture with uh, which has become a global uh, phenomenon and and it, how how these these kicks drop is it's like the new way to release so the the genesis of the drop is inseparable for sneakers and sneaker coaching and applies that with athletes and nfts and uh it's 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 almost one on one and this this new crypto native token standard of nfts is designed to empower the creator um so this this new creative economy that we're living on that we're living in now and it's happening in, in real time the athletes really can can leverage their who they are and and how they um approach their their brand building um it's um it, it, it's it's something like for like I, just seeing the recent 
what, what happened with Brunk and, and with Patrick, um, you know, being able to mint their own version of the digital sport collectible and, and, and seeing, I think Brunk was 1.2 million. Uh, the museum of, of, of Mahomes was brilliant. It was like over 3.4, I think, total. Um, it's game changing. It's revolution, revolutionizing the industry. And it's like thinking of, thinking of like how popular autographs are when it comes to athletes and celebrities, and now thinking of that same sort of approach, um, taking it as a digital signature um, or the digital certificate of, of, of authenticity. So you can apply it to anything, and um, I think the opportunities are endless here. I'm kind of what Rod just went off of. I think the thing that people need to remember is that uh, before intellectual property didn't really have a free market, right? So we weren't sure what things should go for. So I think some of the surprise is what the prices are for some of these items. Um, but when you see art, intellectual property and technology meet in a free market, you're gonna have price discovery, which is what we're going through right now, right? I think, I think that's great. Uh, maybe some things will settle down over time. But I think the one thing that people always, I mean, the people that are heavy into it obviously know, but the, the, the common person when they see these prices don't take into account is that uh, the digital world has something that the physical world can offer, which is the ability for these creators, usually if a sports team, a musician, an artist, or a creator of any type sells an item, they make money in the primary market, right? And that's it. In the digital world, they can continue making money on these through a royalty stream, whether it's sold five times, 10 times, 15 times, or 100 times, right? So for the first time in history, not only do we have price discovery for IP for creators, artists, whatever it might be, but they also have a way to revolutionize the, the, uh, the additional revenue stream, right, forever. So I think that's kind of where a lot of the value is being placed. Um, and, and, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, we're going to go through a period of time now where we find that price discovery and we have to discover where that uh, should trade at in the future, right? And let me let me tack on there because I think that's spot on from the creator standpoint and then from the consumer, right? The prices may seem high, but once again, first time you really have a secondary market. You don't buy a football jersey, you wear it three times and then you sell it back, right? You can't rent these things. So for some of these things that are going to have extreme utility, you can eventually trade them off a of marketplace. So if you want to get into Spencer Dimwitty's, you know, private club, you can buy up his moments, you can own his stuff, but then when you're kind of tired of Spencer Dimwitty, maybe a fan will buy him. And if you sell him at a loss, it was still that entertainment. So it's not a net zero game. And it's a lot of why I think attention off of sports betting shifted just a tiny bit because sports betting, my best example is like, if you bet on Josh Allen this year to win the Super Bowl, win MVP, make it out of the AFC, you lost all three of those bets. If you picked up Josh Allen sports cards or you're going to be able to pick up the Josh Allen NFT, your your value actually rose and you can trade that off throughout the season. So I think that's very important. Yeah, I uh, just, just to add to that, and I couldn't agree more, but like, you know, one can argue that these digital goods are just as valuable as the tangible physical item itself. Um, but like when you look at, look at it from, uh, from a ballpark side, it's like, it, they, they operate in the same economic principle of supply and demand, which is driven by uh, novelty and the digital uh, scarcity. So by, it really comes down to me, it's like there's a saying, right? The, the art is in the eye of the beholder. So it's like when, when I see some of these paintings on walls that it looks like my three-year-old did it, and people are paying, you know, $50,000 for like paint on a, on a canvas, I'm like, what's, what's any more different than, than uh, something you can hang with the wall, which is you're capturing or uh, encapsulating the, the moment and having that sort of emotion trigger that that sort of, whether it's a physical item or digital good, it, it does to you as an individual. So um, it's, it, so so long as you're not, um, and, and this applies to, to athletes and also student athletes, which I know we're gonna talk about more, but so long as you're not breaking any sort of like CBA rules, um, I, I empower and, and support the athletes um, getting involved with these emerging markets and, and being a part of this movement right now. So then kind of a follow up to that, you know, Joseph, you brought up the fact that it's a revenue stream forever, potentially. What are your thoughts around the ideology that athletes might buy up a lot of their moments and then kind of sit on them to watch the value grow as we go through these pain points and understanding the market and what kind of a value should go to each moment and what type of moment makes that value? 
they're going to. I think they already are, really. I think, especially we've seen it in the physical world, uh, right, like trading cards. I know 10, 15, 20 athletes that have been actively and aggressively buying up their rookie cards, right? Just like it's like the newest way to bet on yourself to some degree. Um, and I, I think it's smart. I think it's kind of like – uh, it, it's the newer generation of that. And I think in like top shot, some of the guys are doing it. Jack probably knows a little better than me in that arena, but I think, uh, it's just like the newest way to bet on yourself. So I think we're seeing it already. I think it's going to continue. Um, and, and it's smart for them to do. I just want to, uh, I have this, the, the kind of the same question right now in the chat, uh, and it's for Lee actually, uh, as an agent, do you see that like right now? as something that athletes ask you to do or just like the, the crypto move, like go try to get the, the contract to Bitcoin or try to buy the moments and stuff like that. Is this is there an appetite right now for uh, for the athletes? So this has been such a great experience to listen to uh, younger uh, 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 techies uh, talk about um, the market, uh, you know, I'd pay to listen to this to Jack and Joe and, and Rob and and because uh, uh, what I'm doing now is figuring out our market um, and and what we can do. But it's uh, so this is all brave new world. Um, are athletes going to ask for their contracts to be paid in crypto? Right. How? How is this going to develop over time? Um, we we know that the leagues control the basic foot game footage, right? And you give up that right signing in a team sport in the initial contract that a player signs. So there's a giveaway of rights to the leagues, the unions, uh, everybody has the, you can't use the marks. Uh, you can't use the logo of the team unless you've shared that with uh, the marketing organizations. This is all brave new world. So yesterday we did an experiment with Patrick just to see what would happen if uh, if he went up and, and how, how we could do it. So what are the capturable moments? Um, um, how much of of an athlete's brand and the manifestations of that should he be trying to buy up and control? Um, and where does this head? What is a collectible moment? I mean, these are all the challenges now that 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 we have to face. And uh, but the opportunity is that to a younger generation. This screen is real, and moments that you capture on this screen is real. I mean, this is the equivalent of the old marketplace. So it requires a, a certain um, creativity <laughs> to be able to to see where this this is going. In the same way that when we developed Athlete Direct back in '99, we had to anticipate where the internet was going and we created the first platform so the point is i'm fascinated um to try to brainstorm where we can get uh with these athletes and not just the stars is there a, a market at a lower level for a more massive group of athletes um how does this develop over time the beauty of of these concepts are that when you have people bidding against each other, the market explodes. So you watch the NFL right now has free agency going on and B plus players are getting A plus contracts because the best players never get free in pro football. They get preemptively signed. But you see what happens when you have people competing against each other for talent. It explodes the market. So watching how people behave in this is all a good object lesson. Um, but, you know, going forward, we need the Jacks and Joes and Robs to, to sort of uh, tell us, you know, how they see it and to add to the creativity of our approach, because this is all brave new world stuff that just happened. We just did the Mahomes thing yesterday, right, to see what would happen. And and we saw it it, it go crazy. And uh, so 
you know, I'm doing a lot of listening here because the bright minds on this uh, panel are telling us where the future is. You know, you know it's, it's something, too, that doesn't get talked enough about when it comes to NFT and empowering the creative community and this, this ecosystem that's been created is the fact that NFTs deliver royalties. Um, you can't, like, if you have a Barry Bonds Tops rookie card, we sell that, you know, Tops doesn't get any of those profit, right? You know, it can be resold 20 times and Tops wipes their hands. You can't do anything about it. But here, that this this is kind of shifting. And I feel like there's, with cryptocurrency, with, with um, a lot of things that are happening with today's technology, there's a, a shift in trust happening from institutions to individuals. And I think this is where NFT will really excel uh, because of the, uh, the some of these features like royalties. Thing I would add, kind of off of Rob and uh, what Lee said, and specifically, like you know, in the case of Patrick Mahomes or Rob Gronkowski or, or some of these guys, um, you know, th there's some people that might label them as cash grabs or whatever they you know want to call them, but the reality is these players have fans in the digital world, right? So they have fans that are looking for these items to buy and sell and trade. Uh, so they're trying to make that connection, provide them with products to connect them to each other. But then also it's a great way for, for younger players. Uh, we, you know, we talked about earlier how younger players have a difficulty uh, capitalizing on this market, it's a great way for them to introduce themselves to a new array of fans, right? So if you think about it from, you know, a, a, of, you know, a 21 year old, 22 year old, 23 year old, who's not a household name yet, uh, but comes in the crypto community, which is massive and extremely engaging and strong on all social platforms. They have the ability to really connect with a new set of fans through NFTs that they didn't have before or, or might have lacked before. So I think that's one interesting component uh, that, that brings a lot of value for people that are trying to build their brand and do that whole thing. I, I, I kind of go back to the idea of right, this, uh, just you brought up earlier and you just brought it up again, you know, this connection. And as Lee was asking, you know, making this more of a brainstorm, Right now we're seeing, you know, videos and photos and physical moments like that. But I think Jack brought it up, like having an NFT possibly be something along the lines of being able to text your favorite player before a game on Sunday. Where do you think we could see some of these avenues being played out and what would they look like? There's so many smart people out there and that's why I'm so excited. Like crypto and the NFT world, you just walk into it and you have to say like, there's just smarter people than me or else you're gonna get lost. And so for that reason, like I can't even begin to think about, like I named a few things, but seriously, like the, the stuff that people are gonna come up with are gonna be incredible. It's gonna be just like the internet was in 99, where like, who would have thought of Twitch? I mean, Twitch came 20 years later, right? You could have never imagined live streaming your favorite video games across the world. So I think to say like, what's gonna come from an NFT? Who knows? But I feel like we've given a few examples that are, that are pretty cool. And I'm sure Joe and Rob can, uh, from their spheres of life, add on with like what, what they would love to see, what they would love. It, it, it's crazy because like I'm, I'm aging myself. I'm, I'm 43, but I was in Silicon Valley back in 97, 90, 98, 99 when the dot com era was was just starting to boom. And I have those same goosebumps now when it comes to NFTs. And like it's it's like like you said, Jack, it's beyond the uh, the the collectibles and the and the memories. Um, we were talking um, your your um, your your license, your driver's license, your um, certificate of ownership on your car. Um, Anything is built on the blockchain of smart contracts. So anything can be digitized. And any and like the um, the government's trying to figure out ways now to try to keep up. And I feel like they're always behind. But eventually, we're all going to have digital wallets where we have our passports, we have a license, we get our, our tax refunds um, sent to. And this is just the wave of the future. And it's 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 definitely something that's in inevitable. We, we also, real quick, we, we talked about a lot of price discovery and we talked about, you know, the people and the top shot and the big numbers, right? And Patrick's awesome drop yesterday and Gronk's before. But I think what people are missing is you don't need NFTs to be valuable. You talked about, you know, your daughter's painting and beauty's in the eye of the beholder. That postcard when I went to Disney World when I was six, it's gone because I didn't, tri I didn't take it back home to college, to New York, back home, then COVID hit, then back, you know what I mean? It, it just can't travel that much, but it can easily travel on my phone. I come on here, 
how cool would it be if I had a little token for all the times I've ever spoken at an event? So like, I think we get lost in NFTs only as an exchange of value because they're somewhat related to cryptocurrency, but just a reminder that they can be completely worthless, but really just an awesome way to collect things and remember. Do you see the athletes doing that, you know, I think Lee kind of mentioned youth athletics earlier on. Do you think that NFTs will unfortunately or fortunately be something that we're starting to see even younger? You know, we talked about the NCAA a little bit, but something like high school, like how cool would it be to own, you know, a Zion from high school moment, things like that. Do you see it starting to progress into the pre NCAA kind of sphere of things as well? Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because you could buy LeBron James sports cards from high school, but those aren't the valuable ones. It is the rookie cards, which you would think like the earlier they come out, the more valuable. But to me, it's more intriguing of like, what if you tokenized your senior year of high school? And instead of signing someone's yearbook, you exchange tokens. And then, you know, you can remember someone for that reason. So then even thinking crazy, imagine owning LeBron James's senior year token or his high school token that only 100 were ever made. So if you want to create value out of these things, some collectors will find value. But just as a whole, being able to see like, oh, wow, I remember him. This is awesome. And then you can you'll be able to link to social and then you can follow their career. So like, I don't think, you know, I would want to own many moments from my senior year. I think I averaged like 1.8 points per game. So um, there, I did hit a couple of three pointers, but, but, but as a whole, you know, I, I don't think there's many, like, think about, we always talk about the bottleneck, which is like how many, you know, high school athletes go play college, how many college athletes make it to the pros and then how many pros even what like are, have value in their moments. Right. So I think for that reason, I don't necessarily see it like, you know, we're going to collect these young superstars, high school stuff. But I do think that one day, you know, we'll be able to tokenize and exchange them. Hey, before before we go on, uh, like I know the chat is going crazy because of the uh, Jack uh, scoring average right now, like 1.8. I don't know. I, I don't know how you can get to uh, one point. Actually, that's a it's a pretty tough. It's, when you when you when you do the math, it's pretty tough to get 1.8, Jack. Uh, just want to tell you, like you you out there saying like. Oh, uh, like me, like there's there's brighter people than me, but like, everybody in the chat right now is like, you got ideas, man. <laughs> we want to work with you. I like, I like it. Go ahead, Bianca. I, like I, I see John. John said Lee may want to sign me. We'll have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> love it, Joseph. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this too. can't hear you so we might have to come back to you in a second we love technology as we're talking about technology yeah his phone got got his phone is, is out right now you can't go with me. but I'll, I'll bounce something off of rob rob do you think you know obviously you're closely with your brother uh you've been around the the era of the dot-com days um how do you think the genesis of watching value in athletes has changed over time and are you excited for the future in this just seeing the way that we're no, no definitely i mean like it's like when we define value it's uh, it's it's the regard that of holding something that that we feel deserving the importance the the, the worthiness the the u- usefulness uh, of something and uh it's we, we were just talking i was i was just thinking about different ways and, and even with athletes like i can only imagine um athletes slash celebrities comes i was going to refer to the rock but i can imagine the rock saying you know everything that's his is in, in his garage that he doesn't use that's in boxes somewhere he's going to mint now and digitize into some sort of asset that he's going to have a lot of so imagine if, I don't know what's happening. Oh, my God. What's happening? Some, somebody got muted. Oh, so this is definitely robotic shit. That, shit. You guys hear me? Uh, let me see. All right, we're good. All right, we're back. Uh, but what I, what I was going to uh, get at was to just imagine me as uh, a fan saying that I bought something from The Rock that he he had it for maybe for a couple, couple of months. It was sitting in his wallet, and now I own that. It's not like some, and maybe he bought it from somebody else. 
but just the, the importance of value and what we in the, as individuals feel like is deserving. It's just um, um, so powerful. And um, like you, you, you were asking earlier about like if, if high schools, um, if, if that's too early and, and, and now that we're getting into the name and image and likeliness, like it's one of those situations that like the NCAA and, and high school could be questionable, but the NCAA for sure, like it would be idiotic for them not to want to work with student student athletes in, in this phase. Um, ultimately, both the NCAA and the student athletes should work together because everybody wins. Um, and, and what I mean by that is like it would be um, – to allow student athletes to benefit from NFT sales, from their highlights, having and, and them being in a position to help them manage that marketplace of the sale of the digital asset, um, the NCAA can collect their smaller percentage for each transaction and for each transaction from there on out. Um, but it allows the athletes to promote themselves, to promote their own brand, to authenticate ownership and uh, ensure the integrity of the sale. So for the NCAA as an institute not to play a middleman and, and creating a this, this sort of bridge to endless of opportunities to me would be idiotic and um, I don't know for, for high school you can question it a little bit more just because it's um, you know they're they're at an early stage I think Andre was saying earlier if, you know 18 and 19 is that's too early and um, you know I was saying on the chat that uh, you know today's generation of athletes especially student athletes are super savvy than we used to be because you know they're born with a phone in their hand um, so it's a lot more common to them. Um, so if, if, if there's any good leading athletic departments out there that are already implementing the innovation of these programs, then kudos to you because you're, you're ahead of the game. Um, and uh, it's important to put the student athlete first and help them with this transition, understanding their, their value and, and how to build an audience and um, use their resources and uh, insights to, to support them. I, I want to bring you guys. <laughs> Can I bring up the issue of retired athletes? Because we're talking about contemporary athletes. And, and what we've found is that the most magical moment to be able to replicate or to capture somehow is the moment that you first fell in love with sport and who you rooted for as a kid. So that, uh, to me, Sandy Koufax, who pitches for the Dodgers, in any way I could associate with him or have a token or something with him is my sweet spot, uh, more than contemporary players. And so if we can capture that moment where you first watched a baseball player or a key magic moment with that player or something, we're talking about contemporary athletes, but there's just – massive world of of uh, athletes that we all grew up uh, falling in love with um so for you know my kids it was ken Griffey jr for me it was sandy koufax for someone else uh was and so really what you're if you can capture an emotional experience if you can somehow fit an nf uh, T to to that moment that's so special in everyone's life, whatever that might be, it's a key. I mean, years ago, someone came up with the concept that you integrate someone sitting in their seat, take a picture of them, and then put it up against uh, uh, the action that it occurred, you know, the touchdown pass or whatever, and put that as a collectible. So, um I'm fascinated to listen to all this, but remember, we have huge markets here. I mean, we have retired uh, uh, athletes um, that mean more to uh, iconic athletes that mean more. If you're a certain age, Earl Campbell, the running back of the Houston Oilers, uh, it, it might be much more impactful to you than than, you know, a, a, a contemporary athlete. So the coolest. And I just want to jump in just two seconds because it's too funny on the chat right now. Uh, Lee, what you just said, actually, it's actually one of the podcasts that me and Bianca are hosting right now, which is called the purest sports moment. And it's incredible. Like we, we have Rob coming in pretty soon, actually. And it's just incredible to see how people actually rely to their own moment. And it's not about just the, uh, winning championship at NCAA. Sometimes it's just about like playing the park and stuff like that. And it's incredible. And I, and for people in the chat, I see 
I, I don't talk that much about pure insane, and, but it's just like we have something that's coming out with our sport where we're gonna crush everything right now. We're gonna go and, and, and capture those moments, and we're not we're not gonna do just like Jack said. We not might not like sell the moment for a million dollar, but we're gonna we're gonna tokenize this thing and make it really fun. And it's coming, hopefully after COVID hit. And but like we have this purest sports moment like a podcast. I just wanna plug that in right now because it's a uh, it's just what what you said. And will you the invitation it will be sent to you, Lee, and to everybody over here. Uh, and Bianca, she's she's the perfect host to it. So you, Bianca, the mic is is back to you. We get about like three minutes. Uh, up before the end of the podcast because I want to respect everybody's time. Dom, you're too sweet. So yeah, I mean, of course I love ending with this question. I think we've come so full circle on it that I can't not ask. You know, Lee brought it up in terms of emotional connection and nostalgia. So for me, like if I had to have an NFT, it would be Patrick Waugh skating out of the net and going in a goalie on goalie fight, right? So I would love to hear from everybody on this panel, what would be your NFT nostalgia moment that just brings you that joy, that shows you that love of sport? Yeah, I, I just put this on the chat. Patrick Ewing, anything Patrick Ewing was was is me. I, I just ordered about two weeks ago a uh, 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 you know, Sports Illustrator when Patrick Ewing was on the cover early on when he was first drafted by the Knicks. And it's crazy, it's, it's been two weeks and I still haven't received it. This NFT that was authorized and authenticated by Sports Illustrator ordered by Patrick Ewing himself, I would have gotten it in minutes. Um, so that's the difference there. But like anything digitized or like uh, physical good is Patrick Ewing. <laughs> what we got here? It's Pat O.J., right? Those are the moments. You can put that on. You can mint that on an NFT. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 guys, going back is like that personal connection with an athlete is not just like, especially the athletes. Like the athletes have to have that sort of um, responsibility and accountability. That it's not just about a quick gain. It's not about a PR angle about trying to capitalize about the with the opportunity. It's really about telling stories to the world that we may have not, may not have known and being able to bring the, the fans closer to the game. You know, I work at the Players' Tribune and uh, we're in the business of, of telling stories, and, but we always put the athlete first in mind. And a lot of these athletes, what I've noticed is that they're, um, it, they can't depend on traditional media anymore to, to really say what they want to say or do what they want to do. Um, so the the athletes are a lot more cautious about how they're being perceived and the relationships they built over time and they curate over time. Um, it's also important. And um, everything that's happening, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's structurally designed to create a better purpose for all of us in this world. Um, and I'm hoping that NFT is able to accelerate um, the things that are happening with capturing these moments and uh, holding on to it in, in a cherishable digital way. Joe, can you you want to give it a, one last try? You're kind of you're kind of still over. How about now? Joe, Joe's our. Uh... Uh, uh... Now. And now. Jack, you might have to take this. Yeah, he'll probably have to. Yeah. Be That's like a horror movie. Uh, uh, you're back. Well, I'm back? All right. We got it. Uh, <laughs> hey. We're on to mic number three. Um, okay, so what was the question? What's our What moment would I NFT? Yeah, like nostalgic, pure joy, go. Um, so... Uh, I'm a Giants fan, so helmet catch in 2007, probably. Um, that, that would be the one. Uh, or the other Super Bowl, the one on the sideline, that's another one. Um, and actually, an underrated one that I think would be great is uh, I loved Tiger Woods winning the 2008, I think it was the U.S. Open, when he had a broken leg and a torn ACL, and he was hurt the whole time. That was one of my favorite moments in sports. So one of those three. <clears throat> so for for me, Bianca, uh, it, 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 as a young kid, it would be Sandy Koufax pitching the Dodgers to the World Series um, and winning the World Series in 1959. Uh, but in terms of career, it would be uh, standing next to Warren Moon giving his presentation speech at the uh, Hall of Fame. 
uh, after working with him for 23 years, or running onto the field after Steve Young was in Joe Montana's shadow forever and ever and ever, and he just throws six touchdown passes, and he runs up and he hugs me, and he says, the monkey's off my back, the monkey's off my back. All beautiful moments, Lee, absolutely. I think that's the beauty of it. It's it's two pronged answer. One, what's like the coolest sports moment, and then one, what's the personal moment. So I'm a Ravens fan, and when we won the Super Bowl in 2012, it was awesome. But it was awesome because I was there with my family, and I and then when I think back on that, you think of like who was sitting in the row with you, and the vantage point more so than any play, particularly in that game. If NFL made a top shot, though, Lamar Jackson's spin against the Bengals last season, most electric play I've ever seen on a football field. So I would pick that one. So, Jack, what if you had a picture of you and your family sitting in the stands superimposed against the magic moment where the confetti falls down? Would that be, would be a, Yeah, it'd be amazing, right? And, and that's why I think we do have photos and videos on our phones. That, that can double as, as priceless NFTs without a doubt. It's the same concept. But if there's a special way to take that to the next level, or if it's uh, just minting the NFT, so it, that mint that picture so it lives on the blockchain forever, right? And never, you get a new phone and you didn't back up your iCloud, it still is out there. I think that's where, you know, it, it's just a nice utility case. Great. Well, I want to pass this back to Dom, but thank you all so much for coming on today. It's been an absolute pleasure to be your moderator. Dom, you want to take it from here? Yeah, I just want to say like one of my purest moments right now is just like listening to you guys today. Like I was a uh, just like Lee, and I was like, wow, we have something special over here. I uh, just want to thank you all. I, I, I believe that everybody that's in the audience, in the panel, uh, I consider you, you as part of the pure family. So we, we, for us, it's like all pure. We're trying to to bring like the sports to a new level. Yes, we have a new sport, but we also have like a, a podcast. We have those panels that I think for for just see, seeing here and hearing it like today, it's incredible. Like uh, there, there's so much we can do, and we don't need like to be only like LeBron James like to to create like the, the next the cultural movement in sport. And what we what I, what I heard today was like groundbreaking for real for real like it was groundbreaking. I just love everything, and thanks all for for coming in. And thanks for like sharing it and everything. So it was like, so, so, such a pleasure. And also just want to like a quick shout out to Bianca. Did a wonderful job today. Again, she's she's awesome. So I just want to tell, tell her like she's awesome. Like she's just, she's just the bomb. All right. <laughs>